Over the years, many fun and great new maps have debuted in Team Fortress 2's Casual Mode. These maps have included different styles, different themes, and of course, even different objectives. But what may surprise you is that while Valve has been behind creating most of these maps, almost the entire other half of TF2's map list is brought to you by its own community. The way that this works is that the community members will work on a map, submit it to TF2's workshop, and if the map is well enough received by both fans and developers alike, the map has a good chance of being entered into the game. However, not all maps make the cut, and this may be due to a variety of reasons. What those reasons always are are sometimes unclear, but one answer we do have comes from a public interview with the TF2 team themselves, where they publicly admitted that in an effort to share the love among the community, they try not to pick maps from the same creator every year. Another answer, though, is that while some maps are certainly creative and fun for the community to play, they just don't quite belong in Team Fortress 2. With that all being said, because of TF2's particular qualifying process, some really great maps have been left out of the game. And so in today's video, I'd like to show you guys some of these great maps and why I personally would still love to see them make it into the game. So to start off our list, we have the stunningly beautiful Sulphur. This map was made by Freya, one of the co-creators of the map Suijin. Now, Sulphur is a control points map, but similar to Suijin, this map shares a strong Asian culture theme throughout it, decorated with tons of high bamboo, wooden temples, sakura trees, and even its own customized fonts. Besides just the overall aesthetic of this map, what I really like about Sulphur is its ability to feel big without actually being too big, and its use of multiple routes to get to separate points. Speaking of which, much like the map Steel, Sulphur borrows the concept of being able to cap the last point before any other point is captured. However, unlike Steel, capping this point won't end the game, it'll just grant your team a creative chance to throw off the other enemy team. If you don't decide to capture D early on though, and instead go for all the other points in order, point D will actually rise off the water, creating a bit more challenge for finishing the round. Overall, this map is creative and a lot of fun, and in my opinion could easily fit into the game's current casual list, especially considering control points is, as of now, lacking any Asian-themed levels. Cuckoo Man's was an incredibly creative map, put together by multiple different map makers, some of which were behind maps such as Snowy Coast, Moss Rock, and Probed. Now this map originally intended to be released with a community update called the Mayan Project, but around that time Valve instead released the Jungle Inferno update, dropping the idea of a Mayan themed update altogether and instead just borrowing a few things from it. But with a South American ruins kind of theme, a golden statue for a cart, and an airplane as its last point, this map would have truly been like nothing TF2 had ever seen before. Hell, it even came with its own announcer. Mission begins in 60 seconds! The map played great too, with multiple flank routes and different height advantages to use, but yet all the while still keeping this feeling of remaining wide open. If you did manage to get your cart to the final capture point, the statue would be stored into the plane and would take off into the sky right before the round ends. This little detail alone made the map feel like so much fun, just because you finally got to see something different happen to your cart rather than it just blowing up at the end. But this was only just one detail that made this map so great. In short, this map was incredibly inventive, and I think the community would still love to see it in the game someday, regardless of whether it fits a jungle update or not. Speaking of the Jungle Inferno update, Humidity was another map that was heavily rumored to make it into Team Fortress 2 around that time. It would have made sense too, considering this map has kind of an indoor-outdoors theme as you go along. And aesthetically, this map has it all. From mountains, to caves, a beach dock with a waterfall, a radio tower for some reason, and so much more. The map plays great too. As a matter of fact, this was one of the best feeling community maps I ever remember playing two years ago. There's tons of different heights and routes to take advantage of, the map never feels too choky, and it really does just feel like an authentic, Valve-made map. 
Besides that, there's honestly not too much else to say about humidity, since it is a traditional payload map, but that's not to discredit anything about it. Trust me, if Valve ever were to put this into the game, it would probably become a sensation overnight. So keep your fingers crossed that one day, this will make it into the game. Okay, so of all the maps that haven't made it into the game so far, this one probably confuses me the most. This map was created by Backscratch, the creator of popular Halloween map Cursed Cove, and I kid you not, has been used in actual UGC comp mode up to seven times. If the TF2 elites have been using this map that often to prove their own skill, why shouldn't this just be in the game? On top of which, this map is one of the most beautiful maps I have ever seen. It looks like something straight out of Super Mario Sunshine, but still designed to keep the classic feel of Team Fortress 2. And with that view, I mean, if that was the last thing I saw while dying out covered in sniper urine, I could still die happy. And this map is so much fun to play. There's so many different obstacles you can jump on and take advantage of, it honestly kind of feels like a soldier or scout haven, but not enough to make it ruin the game. Overall, I think the TF2 team should really just bite the bullet on this one and finally play Stallone into regular casual gameplay so the rest of us can enjoy it. Now if we're just talking pure fun here, Effigy would have to take the cake. Created by Mimas Torres, E. Arkham, and once again Freya, this map takes the traditional payload style and adds an awesome twist to it, Tug of War. This means instead of just having one team be able to push their own cart, in Effigy both teams push the same cart, and whoever finally pushes the cart to the enemy side first wins. This makes for some really fun, intense gameplay, and the map's close quarters make it feel like you almost always have the chance to bring your team back. And if for some reason you're ever not too busy battling in this game mode, you might also get the chance to appreciate how gorgeous this map is, with hanging lanterns, large temples, zen gardens, and flowing creeks, it's honestly worth exploring sometime if you get the chance. And if all that wasn't enough, when a team finally gets the cart to one side or the other, the cart shoots off fireworks into the sky, giving the winning team something they can watch with pride and awe as the round ends. So if you wouldn't want to see this map get put in the game, it's pretty obvious that you hate fun. But for the rest of us, we'd really love to see Effigy get put into the game. And finally, for possibly the most unique map listed so far, Fish Ladder. Fish Ladder is an industrial style payload race map, but like nothing the average player has ever seen before. Instead of a cart, you're pushing a tank. Instead of multiple points, there's just one. And instead of trying to blow up your cart, instead, your objective is to blow up a boat. See, the objective of Fish Ladder is to push your tank to the team's capture point three times before the enemy team does. Each time you get your tank to the point, it'll blast an explosion at the boat that's actually so powerful the tank will repel itself through a wall. Now once the tank lands, your team will have to push it along a new path to score again. Perform this three times and the boat will finally sink from the explosions, submerging into the water and granting your team the victory. Now I personally really love this because it's a super creative variant to how payload is normally played and creates a real urge for teamwork and strategy. For instance, should your team just blindly push their own cart? Or should they go fight the enemy team in order to stop them from pushing theirs? It's a constant struggle that prevails throughout the entire map, but either way, you'll likely all have a great time playing this map, and that's why it makes my final entry for maps that should have been put into Team Fortress 2. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and as a quick respect, I think I should take this time to also list off some honorable mentions. Overgrown, a huge villa map that you can tell was made by someone who loves making maps. Ludtengrit, a frontline-themed King of the Hill map with an interesting twist. Pier, a beautiful Venus-themed map with incredible scenery and adventurous design. Valentine, another frontline-themed map where you rush off valuable art to a hovering helicopter. And Oasis, an Egyptian-themed map with absolutely stunning detail that make almost anyone want to play this map. So anyways, if any of you guys are wanting to try out these maps from the video or any of these honorable mentions, check out my Patreon server. It's currently only $5 to gain access to my own personalized server, and once you're in, you can invite as many of your friends as you want. There's also a few other maps you'll probably want to see. Or... not. Until next time, this was Big Joey! Later.